I've been part of a team that's gone on to win three in a row is just it's crazy really and you kind of forget about it sometimes. Like all the guys that I played with growing up through the years, like we're all still friends and everything. So it really is like, a, it's a good family sense and a good community sense. We had one in All-Ireland in 97, 99, 2000. It's more local at your club, you know everything, you know the setup. It's different than joining a county panel. It was nearly like a kind of state we could say, we're here, we're ready to play. No one's going to push us over this year. This podcast is sponsored by Declan Kirby, GA Star. Declan Kirby, GA Star is a children's GA book written by primary school teacher and GA coach Michael Egan. Follow the trials and tribulations of Declan Kirby and his team at Smith Green Gaelic Football Club. The book is a very good read for any parents who are looking to get their children involved in Gaelic games. The book is available in Eason's Little and All Good Bookshops. It's also available to download on Amazon, so make sure to go and check it out. They're very good supporters of the channel and the page, so you certainly be doing me a good favor as well if you went ahead and checked the book out so i do very much appreciate it the link is in the description down below and let's get straight into it Yes, what's the story everyone? Welcome back to GA Fan TV. My name is Aaron. I hope the form is good. And this is the Club Talk Review Show, the show in which we look back on all the weekends. Club football and hurling. We discuss all the big talking points from all the big games. We look at some reaction on Twitter, some reaction over social media as well. Break down the games, discuss the games. And um, yeah, if you are new around here, if you could leave a like and subscribe, I would appreciate it. And also, I do want to say a big thank you to anyone who subscribed or um, you know left comments recently, liked the videos, or contributed to the success of the channel in any way whatsoever. Look, listen, over the past couple of years, it's been it's been tough for everyone, hasn't it? You know, with there being a lockdown and whatnot. But you know, the one saving grace is that my full time job, I've, I work from home, so it's actually allowed me to make a lot more videos. It's given me a lot more time to make videos and focus on this channel. So although COVID has been horrible for everyone, the only kind of positive in my own life is that I've been able to focus a lot more on this kind of content and these kind of videos. And, you know, it's been very successful because of that and because of you lads as well. So I do really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, let's get straight into it. I do also want to say as well, like we get so much right, don't we? We're hurling like what a sport, what a game. Like sometimes the GEA is just absolutely breathtaking. Sometimes it's just absolutely unbelievable it's emotional it's you know there's heartbreak agony pain ecstasy but then there's you know unbridled joy and we've seen that in many occasions this weekend you know you had Lockmore Castelloni with an extraordinary story once again beating Turles Sarsfields by a scoreline of 214 to 213 progressing on into the Munster Club Senior Hurling Championship completing a historic double in Tipperary following on from what the footballer has done last week it's St. Finbars who got over the line against Clonic Hilty in dramatic fashion in the Cork Senior Football Championship final. You had rootless displays from Ballier and Kilmacu Croaks, or Ballygunner and Kilmacu Croaks, I should say. Ballier, unfortunately, on the receiving end of a hammering of Ballygunner. So, like, we've seen some brilliant, brilliant hurling at the weekend. And, you know, sometimes GA can get a lot of criticism. Sometimes we can be quick to throw the red flag and be like, oh, look, listen, this was a terrible game. This was brutal. This was poor. When you see moments like that, when you see some of the scenes that you've seen in the final whistle of the Lockmore Castle on lads, Noel McGrath consoling his, or, or Noel McGrath's father consoling him at the full-time whistle, um, you know, almost breaking down in tears. You can see how much it means to these lads. And that's... I think one of the reasons why club football and club hurling is just so powerful and probably the best competition in the country in my opinion because like it's just pure unbridled joy and just uh, oh, it's brilliant to watch we'll crack on with the games anyway and as we said there Lockmore Castellani they beat Turles Sarsfields by a scoreline of 214 to 213 and uh, I didn't watch the game live I, I was busy on Sunday I was out Saturday night so a bit of a hangover on Sunday to say the least and I wasn't uh, I wasn't in my own house on Sunday morning so uh, yeah look listen I didn't get to see the game live but I did go back and watch it last night as soon as I got home and um, what a win for Lockmore Castelloni and you know even when I was keeping an eye on the score um, as the game was happening live when John McGrath scores that winning free you're like of course of course you know it just had to be John McGrath it was like what we said in the preview where I said, you know, my prediction was that Lockmore Castelloni were going to win this on penalties and John McGrath was going to score the winning penalty. Not quite 
that prediction pulled off, but it was John McGrath who scored a winning score um, right at the death. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's fairy tale stuff written in the stars, whatever you want to say about this Lockmore Castelloni side progressing on into the next round about Munster Club football and, and Munster Club hurling. Um, and having gone back and watched the game, I mean, you know, you were watching the first half and it was kind of the, you know, a similar trend for Lockmore Castelloni once again. A little bit slow out of blocks in the first half, 12 wides. Uh, in the first half in total, they were struggling to really get up to the flow of the game. I mean, Turles Sarsfields weren't particularly brilliant either. It wasn't like they were miles ahead of, of Lockmore Castelloni, but certainly they were the more comfortable side in the first half. They had just four wides uh, as opposed to the 12 of Lockmore Castelloni. Dennis Maher of Turles Sarsfields, I thought, was very impressive. Uh, he was catching a lot of high ball. He was winning a lot of that, that uh, those long balls being floated in there causing a tremendous amount of problems for Lockmore Castelloni as he did in the first game as well in the drawn game so um, he was causing a couple of problems but like Lockmore Castelloni the thing that they do so best is even when they don't play well or even when they're not at their absolute best they stick with the opposition and they stick with the teams they're going up against and they do the same in football as well it always just gives them that chance going into the final 10 to 15 minutes that they're still in the game and you know, that's what they've done in the first half. They're only four points down at the end of the first half. So still very much within touch and distance and still very much in the game and certainly not out of it. But the turning point in the game was the third quarter right after half time. Terla Sarsfields hit four wides uh, in the opening couple of minutes. A couple of unnecessary wides as well from uh, Terla Sarsfields. I would wonder, was there a message from management maybe to go for more opportunities? They only had four wides in the in the first half. They weren't really creating enough and was there a message there from management to go for goal a little bit more, try and take more points, try and punish Lockmore Castelloni a little bit more? But in doing so, they actually squandered up possession a lot of the time, hit a lot of chances wide. You know, they hit six wides in the opening five to ten minutes of the second half, which was more than what they hit in the first half and the entirety of the first half. And Lockmore actually outscored Turles 1 5 to a point before Dennis Maher's goal right before the second water break. And that was really the turning point for, for Lockmore at that stage. Like, they were f really, really dominant. The likes of Brian McGrath was doing absolutely brilliant. Connolly in around midfield was doing a tremendous job in and around there. And John Maher, of course, was extremely impressive as well. It was a lovely goal from Dennis Maher as well. Pa Burke burst forward. He slipped it into Dennis Maher, who got the goal for Turla Sarsfields. And that brought it within a point, and you thought... Okay, well, Lockmore Castelloni have had their best spell in this game, 1 5 to a point, but then that goal goes in, and all of a sudden it's just a point in the difference between the two. Turla Sarsfields are certainly still in the game, they're certainly not out of it. And it certainly was in the melting pot going into the final couple of minutes. Adrian McCormick hit a couple of scores as well, and it really was there for anyone. It was there for either side, a lot like a lot of Lockmore's games over the past couple of weeks. And in the end, you know, a free over by the sideline. Up steps John McGrath, who actually probably had you know his quietest game out of the last seven. I mean, he won man of the match six weeks in a row in both football and hurling. So I think the man is entitled to a bit of a break. And even at that, he was still brilliant. Like he still scored seven points, two of which were from play, and obviously scored a winner. So I mean, what more can you say? What more can you need from John McGrath? And like with this Lockmore side, I mean, maybe they need to start calling this parish in this town Lock McGrath. In all honesty, Lock McGrath, Lockmore, whatever you want to call it, because. I mean, it's just incredible what they've done. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a statue of John McGrath at some stage in that town. Uh, never been there myself personally, so I don't know, you know, how the town looks. But I'm sure they'll have a. They, surely they have to put a statue of him in there at some point. I mean, this man, like what he has done, is just unbelievable. I mean, winning, scoring the winning goal in the football championship, and then scoring the winning point in the in the Lockmore Castelloni or in the hurling championship final. I mean it's it's literally it's John McGrath's world and we are all living in it. I've absolutely no doubt about it. This performance and this win from John McGrath's Lockmore Castelloni side, not just him by the way, Noel McGrath, Kieran Connolly and John Maher as well. They've all convinced me that this is that life is some sort of simulation and it's Lockmore Castelloni who are dictating what happens here. They they are basically telling us what happens in life. I mean I, I, I don't know. It was incredible stuff from Lockmore Castelloni. What a victory. And a notable person within the GEA community and within GEA circles is, of course, Buff Egan. And he was actually at the game between Lockmore Castelloni and Thurla Sarsfields. Uh, I believe he managed to catch the second half or the end of the game or something like that. Anyways, I was following his posts on Instagram. So let's actually show a couple of clips from 
his time at the game that he put up on Instagram and on Snapchat. And uh, very good because it samples the atmosphere of the game. So let's have a quick look. Trying to get in to see the end of the Tipperary holding final. Every door and gate is locked. Jesus, that's fierce action inside. Can't get in to see it. There not a man, woman or child to be seen. It be it all. I was locked into the toilets. Now I'm locked out of Taurus. Can't get in. No way in. Jesus Christ. Must be nearly over now, sure. I was at the first hurling match. Massive win for Kilmoyley. Massive win. Now, here come Taurus. A four points down. They probably need a goal. A lovely pass. Can he bury it? Chance. Goal. Back on the net. One point game. Brilliant goal. One point to it. question I want to know is, will we ever see the Kilgarvan horrors out there in fame simple stadium? Will the day ever come when Buff Egan watches the Kilgarvan horrors in simple Yeah, fair play to Buff there. He was at one of the intermediate games before that as well. So if you want to have a look, go on to Buff Egan's Instagram and Snapchat account to see the stories of himself at the game. And I did also want to say as well, you know, I wanted to pass on my uh, thoughts with his family. It was actually his 10th year or the 10th year anniversary of when his sister died from suicide. I can't imagine how uh, his family, himself and his family felt when they went through that. Um, obviously a tragic day in a tragic circumstance and look listen fair play to him on the 10 year anniversary to be going out there following hurling following your passion you know just wanted to pass on my um condolences and suicide is a horrible thing unfortunately a lot of people a lot of us have no people who've died from suicide it's tragic unexplainable and you can't you can't really get your head around it in all honesty i've lost a couple of people from suicide myself and it's yeah it's horrible so i'll link down some suicide prevention links down below if anyone could check them out and yeah like what i said before passing on my thoughts to uh both vegans uh, family and friends and to himself there as well and next up for lockmore castellani will be bally gunner and bally gunner oh my goodness me what a performance against ballier an absolute annihilation an absolute domination they beat Ballier by a scoreline of 320 to 26. I mean, this was clear and utter domination in its absolute finest. The energy that Ballygunner play with is frightening. They look a step ahead of everyone. They were first to every ball. They were brilliant at winning the ball. The pace that they played with was absolutely extraordinary. It really, really was. And like Ballygunner, obviously one of those sides that are probably notable for not being able to get through Munster over the past couple of years. They've been very dominant in Waterford, uh, winning the waterford senior hurling championship the majority of the time over the past 10 years or so it's just been getting through munster that's been the big problem for them but they look as good as ever and i think when you look at the teams that are remaining in the munster senior hurling championship as well a lot of the big hitters aren't in there it's a huge huge opportunity for bally gunner to go on and win that and finally break that sort of voodoo that's held them back over the past couple of years in munster and yeah like desi hutchinson was absolutely brilliant some of his flicks at different stages flicking it over players and whatnot was extraordinary like, he is one of the best hurlers in the country, like, no doubt about it. And you've got Peter Hogan doing a lot of the, the work in and around the middle as well. And Porrick Mahoney, Mikey Mahoney, so much talent all across the board. And I think what we've seen with Waterford, the Waterford senior hurlers in the past couple of years, obviously um, getting to an All-Ireland final, getting to an All-Ireland semi-final, I think it's stood to Ballygunner a lot because that spine of that Waterford side is also in that Ballygunner team. You're thinking of Peter Hogan, Desi Hutchinson, Stephen O'Keefe as well. Okay, Park Mahoney has been injured for uh, the championship for the past couple of years with the Waterford senior hurler. So we'll see what happens with him in the next couple of years. But having him back in the side as well for Bally Gunner is a massive, massive plus. And like this game against Bally A, like if this had been a boxing match, it would have been stopped after 20 minutes, uh, you know, maybe even less in all honesty. Like this was round one knockout, clear domination, not even a contest in, in any way whatsoever. Ballier didn't even register a point from play until the final couple of minutes. At one stage in the second half, the scoreline was 217 to four points. And for Ballier, look, listen, I mean, it's hard to really kind of put your finger on what went wrong for them. 
They're obviously missing Tony Kelly, but I don't, you know, I understand that Tony Kelly is one of the best hurlers in the country, and they certainly could have done with him on the pitch. Would the scoreline have been as dominant as what it would have been if Tony Kelly was on the pitch? Probably not, but I still think Ballygutter would have won this game quite comfortably. I think for Bally A, like from what I noticed, I haven't seen too much of them in the Clare Senior Hurling Championship. I've seen a couple of highlights and whatnot. They just didn't seem to be up to the flow of the game whatsoever, and they started really slow. They were slow at, I suppose, gaining possession, slow at working the ball, a lot of aimless balls into Noel Daisy, and like they were turning over the ball far too easily. Uh, and Bally, and you combine that with the fact that Bally Gunner were just absolutely brilliant, it just meant Bally Gunner were so, so comfortable for the majority of this game. And Bally Gunner just didn't let up at all. Like, even after, like, at the start of the second half, Bally A hit a point straight away from Noel Daisy from a free. That was their fourth point in the game, their fourth free in the game. And you were thinking, surely, maybe now they might just get a bit better in this game. They couldn't be, they, it was like it couldn't have got much worse in the in the first half, in all honesty. But Bally Gunner just stepped it up a notch again. They scored 1-9 without reply. A whole host of goals in there as well. Just absolute domination. And even Ballier's two goals towards the end of the game, one of them for Martin O'Leary, another one from a penalty, like that just made the scoreline slightly more respectable in some ways. But even at that, it was a clear, clear domination. And I suppose for Ballier, they came through clear. Huge achievement for them. Obviously have their star man missing. They'll regroup and they'll go again next year, no doubt about it. They're a good side and they just had an off day in many ways. A tweet here from GA Joe says, Bally Gunner 320, Bally A 26 full time. If Flair was thrown on the pitch for a finish, that was about the most exciting thing about a game that never got going. Yeah, I did see the Flair at the end of the game as well and definitely a little bit random uh, to say the least. But uh, I would disagree with the second part of, well, I suppose I disagree with this tweet entirely. Um, because like a game that never got going. I mean, Bally A never got going. Like, but it was a great game. Bally Gunner were absolutely brilliant. They were really, really good from start to finish. And if Bally A had a match, Bally Gunner and their intensity, we probably would have been talking about one of the games of the year. So you know, sometimes in GA for whatever reason, a lot of GA social media accounts and whatnot have this habit of criticizing games when they're one-sided. I think that's just a little bit harsh. You know, one team didn't get going, the other team did get going. It was a cracking game. It was brilliant from a Bally Gunner point of view. I really, really enjoyed the way they played. I enjoyed their intensity. I enjoyed the goals, the points, and how much quality they have all around the field. So, you know, just because the game was really one-sided doesn't mean that it was a bad game or the game never got going. Bally A never got going. But other than that, Bally Gunner were absolutely brilliant. So, um, yeah, I would disagree with this tweet here, in all honesty. And as I said, next up for Bally Gunner will be Lockmore Castellani. And I'm going to be very excited for that game, in all honesty. And look, listen, Bally Gunner will go into that game as clear favourites. Uh, Lockmore Castellani also have the football coming up this weekend as well. So they're going to have that game in between that game versus uh, Bally Gunner. So it's going to be very interesting. Look, listen, you wouldn't write off Lockmore Castellani. I'm certainly never writing them off again, in all honesty. But you would look at Bally Gunner, surely, surely, as the favourites, they're going to come through here. I mean, the last time they came up against the Tipperary side in the Munster Club Senior Hurling Championship, it was in the final against Boris Lee, and they lost that game two years ago. So you wouldn't write off Lockmore Castellani entirely, but um, you would surely have to look at Bally Gunner as the favourites there. The other game in Hurling worth speaking about was Kilmuckle Croaks. They beat Raharney in the Leinster Club Senior Hurling Championship by a scoreline of 519 to 15 points. Didn't see this game, but a very comprehensive result right there for the Dublin Senior Hurling Champions. A 19-point victory in the end. And from looking at match reports and from seeing a, some different reaction online, it certainly looked like this was very similar to that of the Bally Gunner game, where one team got going, another team didn't. And once again, if this had been a boxing match, it probably would have been stopped very early on. And for Kilmichael Croaks, very, very dominant display. Did not see this kind of result coming uh, in all honesty I do think they are contenders for the All-Ireland it would be very tough for them to get out of Leinster with Bally Halen there but they probably are in the top three top four teams in the country in my opinion but like Raharney are no mugs good players in there like Killian Doyle and Kieran Doyle you know Westmead Hurland's in a good place at the moment in my opinion so to win this game by 19 points a very very impressive stuff and you know following on from that brilliant sort of um, extra time performance against Nafina in the Dublin Hurling final. So, look, they're going to be a tough team to match in, you know, a potential all Ireland or a potential Leinster final of Kilmuckle Croaks versus Ballyhale Shamrocks. I mean, that is one to get the popcorn out and, and watch because that could be an absolute cracker. Potential game of the year right there, in my opinion, between Kilmuckle Croaks and Ballyhale. But they both will still have to come through their semi-finals. Ballyhale Shamrocks, 
Uh, of course, still have to play Mount Leinster Rangers, and the winner of that plays St. Rhinos of Offaly. And for Kilmacud Croaks, they will play Clock Balakala of Leash in the semi finals. I did record an instant live reaction to Clock Balakala's comfortable win over Rapparees in the other game in the Leinster club senior hurling championship so uh, you'll see an image on screen of the video if you click into the most recent videos on the channel you will see that there and you can go and uh, watch my reaction to the game i'm not going to discuss it in too much further detail now but certainly what i would say is kilmacud croaks will probably be the favorites for that game but look listen clock balacola have a lot of very good hurlers in there like willie dunphy um in there as well you know very very and obviously stephen picky mar what a top class hurler he is so uh Clock Balakala are no mugs, and they're going up against a very good Kilmacook Croaks side. Kilmacook Croaks would be the favourites, but look, listen, we'll preview that game once it comes around. And last but not least, we have the Cork Senior Football Final, and it was St. Finbar's 14 points, Clonakilty 13 points. And, um, you know, I haven't watched too much of the Cork Senior Football Championship this year, but a big win, no doubt about it, for St. Finbar's. Clonakilty were obviously coming in as underdogs and certainly pushed St. Finbar's to the pin of their collars. And you'll see an image on screen there from the GA Statsman Instagram account. So as you can see there, they were the stats on the game. St. Finbar's winning the game by a point. And I'll just read out what he said here on his Instagram account. So he said, stats on today's Cork Premier Senior Football Championship final as the Bars reign supreme for the 10th time. Commiserations to Clonakilty who gave it their all with most of their team putting their hand up to Keith Ricken for 2022. It was the Bars day, it was the Bars day however, their second title in four years. Superb side. My man of the match was Ian McGuire who was fielding expertly left, right and centre. What a phenomenal performance from the core captain. Other nominees include Stephen Sherlock, Morris Shanley, Garode Barry, Ross Mannix, Brian Hayes and Sam Ryan. There was great performances all over the field on both sides. The Bars now play either Air Og Ennis or Lockmore Casalini in the Munster Club Senior Football Championship. And you'll see there the scores on the day as well. So Stephen Sherlock with seven points, four of which from place balls. Ian McGuire and Dennis O'Brien both chipping in with two points. Brian Hayes, Killian Myers Murray, and Connor McCrickard also all getting on the score sheet. And for Clonakilty, six points for Darrow Shea, five from place balls, two for Ross Mannix, two for Sean McAvoy, Morris Shanley, Jack O'Mahony, and Garrod Barry also getting on the score sheet as well. So big win in the end for St. Finbars. They will play Erog Ennis or Lockmore Castellani in the semi finals. And I suppose for St. Finbars, look, listen, they'll certainly be one of the contenders to come out of Munster coming up against either Lockmore Castellani or Erog Ennis. Um, I do think Munster is wide open in many ways. I would still have the side that comes through Kerry as the favourites, whether it is Austin Stacks or Kerrens or Rattleys. Obviously, we'll be previewing that game at some stage uh, during the week. But, you know, I would still have the winner of that to come through as favourites. But, look, listen, there is an opportunity there for St. Finbars. There is an opportunity for Aero Guinness or Lockmore Castellani. And, uh, I mean, the football championship is very, very exciting. And a huge win for St. Finbars. Harsh on Clonakilty in some ways. Well, not necessarily harsh on them, but, you know, they've come so close to ending that way for a Cork Senior Football Championship. And tremendous year for them, a brilliant year for them. But for St. Finbars, it's their story. You know, won the last game on penalties and obviously winning this game right at the death as well. So massive congratulations there to St. Finbars, who march on into the next round or into the semi-finals of the Munster Club Senior Football Championship. But anyway, lads, we'll go ahead and wrap this up here. If you could leave a like and subscribe, I would appreciate it as always. And yeah, there will be a football preview out on Thursday or a preview of next weekend's games, which obviously have more football games than hurling games. So we'll be focusing specifically on the football games and the Kerry football final as well which uh, should make for a very intriguing and interesting game. So stay tuned for more videos, more podcasts, interviews, absolutely everything, match reactions coming on the channel. Do very much appreciate all the support. And there will be an exciting announcement coming soon. Maybe next week, maybe the week after. Hmm. I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see when we do that. Coming close to Christmas. Who knows? Who knows what I've got cooking? I sound a little bit like The Rock there. Hmm. I'm not too sure. Me and The Rock, I mean, I mean that would be a mismatch. I mean, that would be a... An early boxing match, you know, f***ing one round knockout or something. Anyway, we'll wrap this up here. My name's Aaron. I'll see you all later.